Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on my channel, and today we're doing something a little bit different. So instead of doing a top 10 or some commander gameplay, maybe a commander deck build, a deck tech, uh, maybe a deck doctor, instead, today we're doing a miscellaneous video. And I've done miscellaneous videos before. Uh, for example, I had a video where I talked about the London Mulligan and what it means com for commander players. There's another one that I had that uh, was talking about how to cut down a commander deck that's way over 100 cards. Cutting down decks, not easy to do, so I made a video for that. And for today's episode, another really important topic for Commander players, and that is how to use Scryfall. Before we jump into talking about how to use Scryfall, I do want to talk about why I think this is so important. Scryfall, in my opinion, is probably my favorite tool for building Commander decks, way better than anything else out there. Uh, this is super versatile, super uh, flexible. You can, you can search so many different things with Scryfall. It's really kind of crazy. And so... Being able to use Scryfall, I think, is a skill that every Commander player, especially all the people in my audience, all my viewers, should really learn to do. So um, that's the first thing I want to mention. The second thing I want to mention is this is not going to be an exhaustive list. It's not going to be an advanced tutorial of Scryfall. This is going to go over a couple of the basics. Uh, I think it goes a little bit past the basics, a little bit into the intermediate usage of Scryfall. Uh, personally, but I think that's uh, you know there's definitely more room to grow. If you want to learn more about Scryfall and how to search on this website. You want to go to scryfall.com slash docs slash syntax. That's where I've gotten all my uh, examples from pretty much. Uh, well, examples, I've, I, I kind of made that myself, but uh, a lot of the things that I'll be talking about will be coming somewhat from this page. It's going to be a lot of the same things in order, but I'm not going to be going through everything. I'll probably be going through about maybe a third of these cards so, or a third of these categories. So that's pretty much it here for the, the two things, two disclaimers I wanted to make to this video before I actually started into it. So we're going to start off with a couple of the most simple, most basic things that you'll need to know about Scryfall. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at an example card and kind of use that example to kind of generate a search that I'd like to do. So Mausoleum Secrets here is a two minute instant with undergrowth that says, search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So with a card like this, we might be interested in cards that we can get with it. So we're looking for cards that are black. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can go about searching for this. And I'm gonna go through a couple of things that I think are not the right way to search for it and then go into a couple of the right, the right ways to do it. So the first thing I like to do here is look for things of a specific color. That's really what we're looking for. And we're looking for the color that's equal to black. So one way I can search for this is color equals black. And one way we can actually keep this in mind is we can actually shortcut this a little bit uh, further. So we can just say C. C stands for color here when you're on Scryfall. We can say C equals B, which B means black. So we're looking for things that are black. When we do this search, we'll actually find quite a number of cards here. And I'm actually going to search this. Um, let's search this by EDH Rec. And I, I, I'll show you why in just a second here. And I'll explain what this does also. So I'm going to say, I'm going to look for things that are color equals black. And what you'll notice when we look through this entire page, all of these things are mono black. None of them are green black or red black or blue black. None of that stuff is on here. But uh, Mausoleum Secrets doesn't say necessarily that we're wanting to have cards that are mono black. It just says for a black card. So it can be a blue black card. It can be a red black card. None of those things are, uh, are, are, are separated from the black uh, stage of Mausoleum Secrets. So what we can do is we can say the color is greater than black. That's another thing we can do here. We can say color is greater than black. If we do that, we've got stuff here. We can see now white black is coming up, green black is coming up, red black, blue black, uh, white black's on here. There it is, white black. We've got all the different colors. We've got three colored cards on here. We've got hybrid cards. I'm sure we'll even find some four color cards. I'm sure at some point more three color cards. I'm sure there's five color cards on here as well. All these cards can be grabbed by Mausoleum Secrets. However, you're noticing now we're missing the mono black cards again. So what I do here is you will remember this, you'll always uh, put something in front of the equal sign if you want to do something that's equal or the other thing. So here, if it's greater than or equal to, we're going to say greater than equals black. So by doing it this way, we get both of those searches in our search. We see the mono black cards, we see the gold black cards. This is actually pretty, uh, pretty interesting if you compare this to C colon B, you'll notice that you'll get those same cards again. So uh, by putting in a colon, that's one way you can kind of shortcut and talk about that. That also applies to another aspect that we'll come to here in a second with our next category. So color equals black, also pretty good to use. Uh, color is greater than or equals to black. 
Uh, C, colon B, that's another uh, shortcut for greater than or equals to. Sometimes if I'm not sure what the colon will do, I'll just put in the other way and not have to worry about it. So that's the first uh, example, first thing we can learn about. And that's pretty much a good way to remember everything here is that everything will be separated either by a colon or by an equal sign or some other type of, uh, you know, inequality sign. You'll, you'll have one of those things telling the scryfall both what it is that you're wanting, which category you're searching for, and then what you're searching within that category. So within the category of colors, I'm looking for things that are black or more than black. So that's the first thing. Uh, before I jump to the next example, though, I do want to talk about these four boxes here. You can look for cards. Uh, this is usually the default, but you can look for all prints. So it'll show you reprints as well in your search. You can. So if I press this one here, if I press all prints, it'll show me every version of Demonic Tutor here at the top. Sometimes that's useful if you're wanting to find new arts for cards. Sometimes it's not useful. Sometimes you might just want to look at all the unique arts. And so you're saying, okay, I just want to see all the different arts that have been printed for Demonic Tutor. So that's another way you can do that. But I like keeping it on cards because I do want to see everything as just one simple card. You can do image. Uh, you can So you can see the cards as images like this. Pretty nice. Uh, you can see it as a checklist. So if you want to go through a lot more cards, you want to kind of compare them. That's something you can do. It also will show up by, uh, you know, the US dollars, euros, and ticks as well. That's checklist. Text only if you're at school. You don't want people to see that you're doing uh, magic card stuff. You can do this <laughs> and have all the words there. So you can read off what the cards do without having the images actually pop up. And then full gives you kind of everything all at once. So if you press full here, it will give you a page filled with all of the individual, you know, cards themselves. So you've got the Monic Tutor, it'll show you all of the different options for it. If you really want to see things in depth, that's the one to go for. But for today, we're just going to be looking at images just because I kind of like the way it looks and it's pretty simple to go through everything. Now here are the sort. Uh, this category here is either auto, ascending, or descending. If you're not sure which one is uh, being used and you want to change it to one of those, you can go for ascending, descending. Usually with auto, I just keep it there because it's pretty obvious. Like if I have EDH rec, obviously the Monic Tutor is here is going to be the top. And if I go to the very last page of Scryfall, I'm going to have all the things that are at the very bottom. So the, the black card that's in the least commander decks here is Young Way Recruits. Two mana for a 2-2 that can't block. So it kind of, kind of makes sense. I'm pretty sure this is pretty expensive too because this is in a, a Portal 3 Kingdoms. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this is Master's Edition. Master's Edition. Eh, it's pretty cheap. Well, anyways, that's, a, that's kind of a digression here. But uh, yeah, sometimes you'll find all sorts of cool stuff on, on Scryfall. So that, that's how this works. The sort, you can use all sorts of great things. Name, you know, the date that it was released, the set and the number that it's in, rarity, color, the, U, the US dollars price, the ticks price, the euro price, the converted mana cost, the power, the toughness, EDH reg, which is from most popular down to least popular, and then the artist name. So there's a lot of different ways you can sort things here if you want to. Uh, we'll probably just go back to CMC here for our next example, but let's go ahead and jump to that because I don't want to I don't want to waste too much time with this video. So second example is let's say you're deciding you want to build a Merfolk deck and you've got Kopala, Slin, Avoda the Rising Deep, Sig River Guide, and Kumena as your options. So you've got a couple of options here and you're not sure who you want to use uh, for a Merfolk commander. And part of that is because you're not sure what Merfolk are even in green or in white. Like does it do you even want to go up to a, a white or green commander? Or is it just better to stick with blue for the merfolk? So you might say, you know, at this point, now I want to look at the color identity. And so instead of searching up by color, like we did before, now we're going to look up by ID. And this is going to be basically the shortcut for identity. So I'm looking for things that are going to be either um, white, blue or blue, green. So if I start off with white, blue, and I've separated it here as uh, W, uh, U, because white is uh, uh, shortcutted by, by W and uh, blue is shortcutted by U. That will allow us to find all the things that are white and blue. But you'll notice when I start looking at this, and I'm actually going to sort this here by, let's go back, by, back down to EDH rec rank. If I sort this by the rank on EDH rec, you'll notice we're seeing a whole bunch of cards that are not white or blue. We do see some mono white and some mono blue, but it's quite a while before we actually come down to seeing cards that are color identity of white and blue together. So it's going to take a while to get down there. Uh, here's one, Azori Signet. So, you know, this is not exactly what we're looking for. Is this really what we're, what we're trying to find? Well, what we can do is this. We can actually grab things that are exactly equal to white and blue. So uh, the colon here for identity works kind of the opposite as the one for color. We're, you know, when you put a colon there for identity, you're looking for things that can fit within the color identity. Whereas with color, you're looking for things that are equal to that or more. Again, if you're not sure what it is, just better, you know, it's better to use the equal sign or the greater than sign. So what we can do here is we can say things that are exactly white and blue. That will allow us to find what types of merfolk are really good for a Sig River Guide deck. And if there are merfolk that we actually want to find. 
Right now though, this is not popping up any mono white worf, uh, merfolk. So instead, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say it's either equal to white blue or it's equal to white. So we're gonna put in a little bit of a, of a separation here. Using the word or will tell Scryfall that we're looking for things that fall into one thing or the other on the other sides of our or. So we're looking here for something that's either white blue or white, and now we've got it. So the problem here though is we're also trying to compare this to merfolk that are green or green blue. So how do we pop up everything that's gonna be green or green blue as well? Pretty simple, we're gonna use parentheses. So by separating these in parentheses, we can now use another set of parentheses to put in all the cards that are gonna be green blue or all the cards that are gonna be green. So now by using two, set, uh, two sets of parentheses, we can actually find all of the merfolk. Now, if we're looking for merfolk specifically, we're gonna have to search for the merfolk type. And you guessed it, it's gonna be using the word type here. Now, if I typed in type merfolk like this, there's gonna be a problem with my search. And I'll show you in just a second. If I, if I just search up type merfolk, you're gonna notice, hey, how come it's popping up source to plowshares? That's, that's not a merfolk. You'll notice though, all the green cards that show up, hey, those are merfolk. And this is what's happened. We've got our or separating our two, um, expressions here are two phrases that we're looking for this one on this side and this one on this side so if we want to actually search merfolk for both sides of these we're going to actually set those back into another set of parentheses we're kind of nesting them in there and if you go to the scryfall syntax page you'll notice that it's under nested conditions so we're looking for things that are nested within each other and now we're finally getting some of these cards we're seeing a lot of really good green and blue merfolk not a whole bunch of white and blue ones though so uh, if we're planning on using something like Stony Brook Schoolmaster or Noyandar, sure we can go with our white blue option, but for the most part, it looks like green blue is more popular for a uh, merfolk deck. There's also another way to do this here with these uh, identity things, and I'm going to go ahead and say you're going to look for things that are greater than blue, because you're trying to find things that are greater than blue, but you want to find things that are going to fit within green, white, and blue. So you don't want to find black, you don't want to find red. So remember this colon means is equal to or less than green, white, or blue. And what we can actually do here is we can actually say we actually do want it less than that. So we want it greater than blue, but less than green, white, and blue. And when we search up that way, we can actually sometimes find cards that are all of those other colors as well. Uh, by, by doing it this way, um, we actually are only finding the cards that are blue. So um, we actually probably need to do this. We probably need to set another parentheses here and say either greater than blue or it does not include blue. So we're gonna say uh, not gonna be, um, we're gonna say it's not equal to blue. Is that the way to do it? Yeah, it's probably the best way to do it. So now we get back up to that 45 search. And you might be wondering, what's with this minus sign? Why did I put that minus sign there? Well, anytime you want to tell Scryfall that you're looking for things that are not gonna be including that, you can use a minus sign. And this will allow you to find basically the same search that we did before, but a little, with a, you know one fewer term. So we're saying either greater than blue or doesn't have blue. We wanna find it within the uh, color identity of Bant. And you don't have to type in the, uh, the letters for Bant in that order. You can type it in green, blue, uh, white this way. It'll still pop up. That's one of the nice things about Scryfall. You don't even have to type in the, the, the letters if you don't remember them. You can type in Bant. That also works here uh, for Scryfall as well. So pretty interesting, all the things you can do with that. Remember here, type, it does uh, come as four letters, but you can actually use just one letter, just the letter T, and search for type morfolk that way. So we've got color, we've got color identity, and we've got type under our belt. We've got nested conditions, we've got the sorting, we've got the uh, greater than, less than, equal to sign. Let's go ahead and go to the next category, which is gonna be talking about searching for types that are not something. So if we were looking for humans with, uh, you know, to play into our Grumgully deck, not gonna work really great with Grumgully. Grumgully here is a commander that says each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. So let's say this is our commander in uh, in, in, in EDH. We're gonna take a look for things that are gonna be in the, I the identity of red and green. That's where we're gonna start off. But we're looking for things that are not the type human. So if we look up this way, we're gonna grab all of the cards that could be in a Grumgully deck that are not human. However, not all of these cards are creatures. So we actually wanna say creatures as well. That's one of the nice things here about type. It works for subtypes, it works for super types, it works for every type of type. All the types of types, types works for. So we've got here all the human, uh, non-human creatures that can enter the battlefield and get a uh, get a plus one, plus one counter from Grumgully. Now, Grumgully is pretty good if you want to have a creature enter the battlefield with persist. So persist is an ability 
that says, um, if this creature dies, when it dies, return it to the battlefield with a minus one, minus one counter if it didn't already have a minus one, minus one counter on it. So we're looking for things that might have that keyword persist. Why? Well, because when we have a creature with persist die, it will come back with a minus one, minus one counter. If it's not a human, Grumgully will give it a counter and those two counters will counteract and they will, uh, you know, reverse each other and they will both disappear. That will allow us to then sacrifice that creature one more time and keep sacrificing it infinitely for some type of value. So what I'm going to be using here is I'm going to be using the word O or sorry, the letter O uh, and that's going to be for the word Oracle. So I'm looking for things that say the word persist and we can grab a bunch of cards here that say persist on them that we could play in a Grumgully deck. So that's the next thing we're going to talk about is persist. But if you look at all these cards, some of them are sometimes having persist and sometimes they don't. So for example here, uh, this one, Airy uh, Oofs, Weefs, I don't know how to pronounce this one, uh, but we're looking at this card, it has persist by itself. However, Antler Skulkin can give persist to another white creature. Well, we're playing red and green, we're not gonna have white creatures, so we don't wanna find Antler Skulkin in our search. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, set, we're gonna surround persist here with a couple of slashes and those slashes will tell scryfall that what we're trying to do is we're trying to do a regular expression this is where it gets a little bit more complicated but i promise you this is uh worth it because personally regular expressions is my favorite part of uh scryfall being able to search with regular expressions lets me really you know tune what i'm searching for save time on myself and not find a bunch of cards that are not going to be what i'm looking for so if i'm looking for persist if i just do it like this if i just send it it's going to give me the same nine cards so you can see here the same nine cards coming back no difference however if i put right before it i put a little parentheses sign and i put in let's say a uh, I, th I think it's called a carrot put a carrot here and actually let me do it without the parentheses first here if i put the carrot I'm going to find things that will have that persist on a new line. If I were to use instead, whoops, if I were to instead use the slash n, uh, this I think works pretty much in the same way. Yeah, so it kind of gets us the same way. If you want to use the caret or the uh, slash n, that gives you things on a new line. So when we search up that way with persist, we actually get all the cards that have persist just by themselves. They don't need to give anything. They don't need to do anything. They just have persist. So that's going to be the start of the regular expressions. There are a couple of other things we can do with regular expressions as well. But for right now, let's kind of combine a couple of ideas that we've gotten so far. So Trophy Mage allows us to search for an artifact card with converted mana cost three, reveal it and put it into our hand, then shuffle our library. We haven't not yet talked about mana cost yet though. So pretty simply, and I think this is going to be pretty straightforward. You can use CMC to look for things that are equal to three uh, or really any other number that you want. And I'm going to be looking here for artifacts. So if I look up CMC equals three, type is artifact. Now I can get all the artifacts that are going to be CMC three. Now there's other things you can do here as well, besides just uh, mana cost things. You can also use mana cost themselves. So for example, here, Edgewalker makes your cleric spells cost white, black, less to cast. So if I'm trying to find the number of clerics that will get a benefit out of both costing white, less to play and black, less to play, I can search up, you know, things that are equal to cleric. So I'm looking for things that are clerics type um, so I'm looking for those and I'm going to look for things that say in their mana cost, I'm going to look for things that have white and black. Now I've used the colon here and I do want to, I do want to change it there just so I don't confuse anybody. I'm going to look for things that are greater than white and black when I'm looking for, uh, for clerics. And I'm going to find a whole bunch here, a bunch of clerics that uh, can be played down for a lot less, but you'll notice none of them are exactly equal to black. So kind of in the same way that we use colors, we can go ahead and put an equal sign here and find things that are equal to black are equal to white black or greater than white black and so that will allow us to find those cards here pretty straightforward i don't use this one all too often uh, but sometimes you'll need to use that for example if you're playing a roshin meanderer deck this mana can only be used on mana costs that contain x so if you're looking for things that are red green and you want to find things with x in the mana cost you just type in x in the mana cost and this will find you things that have that x there so we can find all those cards here we can use the mana created by roshin on these cards that we find with this search so we're doing pretty good. We're about halfway through this video, or at least we should be. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that we've lear learned so far. We're going to kind of combine them as we go forward. And sometimes I do want to talk about cards that are going to be a little bit less likely to come up. So we've talked about X costs in the mana costs of, uh, of your cards. Sometimes you're going to be looking for something totally different. 
And this is where you would go to syntax and see if that's something that, that Scryfall can search for. So for example, Rage Extractor says whenever you cast a spell with the Phyrexian mana in its mana cost, uh, Rage Extractor deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost to any target. So if I'm looking for cards with that mana cost, I might want to look for things that say like white or Phyrexian. Or maybe I'm looking for things that uh, are red in Phyrexian, right? So I, I can do this. I'm going to use these brackets because anytime you have to put in one of these more complicated mana cost, um, you know, either uh, pips, you're going to be using the, the brackets to kind of let Scryfall know what you're doing. So if I look up uh, either white or red, I'll find all those cards. And I can do that for each one of those colors. These also work, let's say you want to find hybrid colors, you're looking for two or red. So here the Flame Javelin comes up, the Reaper King comes up. Let's say I'm looking for things that are white or blue. And actually let me do here uh, white or green because that's the wrong order. I can show you that the wrong order still works. So I can find those things pretty easily. Uh, for the example of Rage Extractor though, if I'm looking for things with converted mana cost, that uh, with a mana cost that contains the Phyrexian mana, pretty simple, you can just use mana is equal to P. And I'm sorry, that's just... <laughs> That doesn't work. Never mind. Never mind. I thought this would work, but it just doesn't work instead. All right. So uh, the, mana co the mana cost, if you want to look for things that have converted mana cost uh, or rather have a mana cost using a Phyrexian mana symbol, you're going to have to put in all those ones that say white or uh, Phyrexian mana. Because I don't think if you if you leave out the rest of this, it won't pop up, right? Yeah, it's not going to pop up. So you've got to type in all those if you want. If you're only playing like two or three colors, you can just put in whichever two or three colors you're playing. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. We've got Morph on the Boundless. Um, this has Changeling, and you can see here, there are spells you can cast for free with Morophon Boundless, a very huge search. I'm not going to go into that here. I instead am going to say, I'm looking for things that can be cast for free with Morophon Boundless, but it's because they're five drops. So I'm looking for things that are costing white, blue, black, red, green. If I do this search, I will find all the cards that cost exactly white, blue, black, red, green. I'm going to look for things that are creatures because obviously Morophon is not going to make non-creatures cost less. And so now we can find all 14 cards that can be cast for free if we choose that creature type with Morathon. So you can see there's a lot of really cool things you can do with uh, just with types, oracle text searching, color, identity, mana cost, a lot of really cool things. But there's way more stuff that uh, Scryfall can do as we go forward. So for example here, Tetsuko Umazawa Fugitive is a, another commander that says creatures you control with power or toughness, one or less, can't be blocked. So if we're looking for creatures with power or toughness, one or less, we're going to be doing an interesting search here. We're going to be looking up POW, which is standing for power, and we're looking for things that have one or less. So we're looking for things that are equal to one or are less than one. So power is equal to or less than, I'm sorry, that's that's the greater than symbol. So we're saying less than or equal or, or, uh, or equal to one, or things that have the toughness uh, less than or equal to one. So those are going to be something that we're looking for, but we want to make sure that we're only finding creatures and we want to make sure that we're only finding things that are in our that's in our color identity. So we're going to look up things that are uh, in the color identity of blue. When we come up with these cards, we're going to find a, quite a number of cards here that we can use. 919 cards, and we'll notice that some of them have toughness zero. Well, those don't exactly help us. So instead, we're going to get rid of the less than sign, and we're going to say power or toughness is equal to one. So here, this will allow us to find, oh sorry, this allows us still to find uh, things that are having toughness one because they still have a power less than one. So what I can do here is I can say, I don't want to find things that have a toughness of zero. Adding that here at the end allows us to get rid of all those cards. And uh, I'm sorry, it does not, does not allow me to do that. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. So I guess we kind of learn all together. I'm going to put here greater than zero because I only want things to have, find things that are, you know, have toughness equal to one. So this will allow me to find something here and allow me to do some really cool stuff here with Tetsuko. But sometimes you're looking for things that aren't necessarily having a specific toughness. You just want to have things that have a toughness greater than their power. So each creature assigns common damage equal to its toughness rather than its power is something that's written on Doran. So if we're looking for things that will follow fall under that uh, search, we're going to say power is less than toughness. And by doing a search like this, we can find all the creatures that have a power less than their toughness. And we can even say here uh, in the uh, color identity of white, green, black. So if we're looking for stuff like that, we can find a bunch of cards that are going to work really well in a Doran deck by, you know, you get down the shield sphere for zero mana, it can attack, oh, well, it has a thunder, but it can block and deal six damage to whatever it's blocking. So a lot of really cool things here that you can do with power is greater than toughness. 
And yet still, there are other times where your, your constraints look a little weird, right? You've got Wild Pair. It says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, you may search your library for a creature card with the same total power and toughness and put it onto the battlefield if you do shuffle your library. Well, if you've got a card in your hand, like um, let's say you've got in your hand a Ornithopter, right? We, we saw that in the previous page. Now, if you've got an Ornithopter in hand, it's got a total power and toughness of two. And you know what? I kind of like Shield Sphere here. Let's do, let's do this example instead. Total power and toughness of six. You've got the Shield Sphere in hand. You've got the Wild Pair. I'm going to look for something that can have a total power and toughness of equal to six. So do I do like POW equals three, tough equals three? And then just kind of change things, you know, going from zero all the way up to six. I don't know. That's going to take me forever. I don't want to have to do that. Do I type in OR and just keep going? Okay, POWER equals four toughness equals two and keep adding things there i mean that's that's not that great either so what you can do instead is say pow tau equals six and this will find creatures that have a total power and toughness equal to six so here you're seeing a zero six three threes two fours uh zero sixes i think i mentioned that already one fives uh not a lot of three threes <laughs> one fives we mentioned already i'm sure there's four twos on here at some point uh, not a whole lot in this uh, in this search though. Two four we we already mentioned. So you can see all the creatures with power and toughness. You add them up equal to six. Gonna be here. I'm, I'm kind of curious now. What can we find by a shield sphere? We can grab a uh, gray merchant of Asphodel, Seedborn Muse, Tatiova, Duplicant. A lot of great cards you can grab with Pow Tow equals six. So that kind of gives you an idea of uh, you know when you want to do something a little bit different. We got two remaining cards uh, to look at. Uh, the first one here is Forge of Heroes. This one is a uh, card that says, True Sargon Commander that entered the battlefield this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it if it's a creature, and a loyalty counter on it if it's a Planeswalker. And this is something that I've used quite a number here, uh, quite a number of times, is using the is function. So sometimes the is function is used for kind of just random things that not, you know, don't really fit into any other category. So if I'm looking for things that are is commander, it will also allow me to find things that are Planeswalkers. So I can search up both is commander and is planeswalker to see all the planeswalkers that can come down and uh, get an additional loyalty counter from the Forge of Heroes. You'll notice that some of them will uh, be also legendary creatures. So if I searched up just uh, you know type planeswalker and I'm gonna look for things that are not creatures, if I search that way, we should get rid of these cards here, right? So those cards are no longer available for us to find. So using is commander can sometimes find great cards for us that we wouldn't otherwise be able to find. Uh, whether it's Planeswalkers, whether it's other types of uh, commanders that are not creatures, sometimes getting a little bit tricky. Um, we want to be able to find those for sure. Another way we can use this is we can use it with Is Fetch Land. And this is another thing that I use all the time. So I'm kind of curious, what's that? What's the name of that white black Fetch Land? It's, uh, oh yeah, it's Marsh Flats. I can use Is Fetch Land and just find that one pretty, uh, pretty simply. So let's kind of combine all of the things that we've learned in this video together by looking at Sunforger. So Sunforger is a three drop artifact equipment that says equipped creature gets plus four plus zero. We can pay a red and a white to unattach it and search your library for a red or white instant card with converted mana cost four or less and cast that card without paying its mana cost, then shuffle your library. And it's got the equip cost for three. Here's where we're gonna go a little bit more in depth to regular expressions. So if you haven't learned the part with regular expressions, that's fine. We're gonna go over that part here pretty simply. So. We're going to start off with things. We want to start off with, uh, in order, red or white. So we're going to look for cards that have the color red or the color white. We can look for that. And we're going to put that into parentheses because, you know, we don't want to separate everything onto one side here of the or. We want to include that all as one uh, search. So we're looking for things that are red or white. Let's say our commander does not have green in it. We're going to look for things that are going to be red, white, uh, blue, and black. We're gonna look for those. That's gonna be in that color identity. We're gonna be looking for things that are in a specific format, right? We don't wanna find things that are not, you know, banned in Commander. So we can say format is Commander, or we can, you know, truncate this to just F Commander. And also Commander doesn't have to necessarily be written out the full word. We can just say EDH. Uh, that's also gonna work on Scryfall. So we've got format EDH. We're looking for things in a specific color identity. We're looking for things that are red or white. We wanna find things that are instants. And we don't want to find things that, you know, might, might flip into an instance. So, um, or, you know, let's, let's not worry about that for right now. We've got things that are instants. Let's say we want to find things that are counter spells. So we want to, things that, we want to find things that say counter, right? Up to this point, we've done pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put those uh, slashes there just in case we don't find everything that we're looking here from the Sunforger. So what counter spells can I grab? 
And you'll notice, as I go through this, I'm finding Battlefield Promotion. This is a two-drop instant that says put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Well, that's not really what I wanted to find. I wanted to find things that could counter target spell. But if I search for this, I'm not going to find stuff like Artifact Blast, which can counter an Artifact spell. So the next thing that we can learn about regular expressions is we can put in a period, which means any number of, uh, you know, any, any, um, any character. And then we can put in an asterisk. Asterisk here means the previous character, you can have any number of those. So here with the asterisk, we can say, um, you know, any number of any characters. So this should allow us to find counter target and then spell. I want to just double check here and see here. Yeah, there is something else that I'm looking for. Keep in mind here, the double negative, that's going to be an important card that we're going to be looking for on the next page. So now that we've got that, we're going to go ahead and say counter target spell. And when we do this, we're going to look for that uh, double negative and we don't see it anymore. And we might be wondering, why is that? Why do we not see the double negative anymore? And that's because it doesn't say counter target. It says counter up to target spells. So uh, if we want to put in here up to, up to two target spells, we might be wondering, okay, how do I, how do I put like, I, I, I want to search for it sometimes and sometimes I don't want to search for it. Well, pretty simply, we can put the parentheses there and then we can put a little pipe here. This pipe kind of works like or, so with the color red or white, if we're, if we're using this or here, kind of what this pipe does. So we're saying we're looking for a counter up to two or we're looking for nothing at all in that, uh, in that parentheses. So now we should be able to find the uh, double negative and there it is there is the double negative however we might be wanting to do this a little bit more simply let's say we can also replace the uh, replace this pipe and empty search with the question mark question mark kind of works the same way as the asterisk in that it looks at the previous character here it's gonna be multiple characters since we use the parentheses and it's gonna say either exactly one or exactly zero uh, you know iterations of that card another one that I don't use all that often is the plus symbol um, which is exactly one or more. So I can't have it come up zero times. It has to be at least one uh, time. Whereas the asterisk here, it can be zero times. It can be a million times. It doesn't matter. It's all those cards. So asterisk basically, it's like the plus, the plus symbol in addition to the question mark symbol. So I hope, I hope that makes sense there. And uh, that's pretty much it for our uh, searches here with, you know, regular expressions. I don't really use all that much else besides, um, you know, I, I already mentioned the carrot here. I mentioned the pipe. I mentioned the question mark, the plus, the asterisk, the period. Uh, there's other things that we can use as well. Like let's say we're looking for um, something that says the, the number four, right? We can say four. Maybe we're looking for also five or six or seven or eight. We're maybe looking for, you know, one or two as well. We can kind of replace any number that we're looking for. We can use the, the expression um, slash D. So that will find all the digits. So you can put in that and find all the digits. And there you go. That's pretty much it though. Uh, there's not much else that I wanted to talk about here for how to use Scryfall. And again, if you're interested in getting more uh, information, Syntax here is the uh, button that you can click right at the top. If you're at the homepage for Scryfall.com, you'll notice uh, Syntax guides right here. Uh, if you want to be able to use this and not you know, have to learn all the Syntax for it, Advanced also works pretty well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video has been helpful to you on how to use Scryfall, how to do all the really cool things that you've got with Scryfall. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to subscribe. That lets YouTube know that I'm actually worth keeping around. So thank you so much to everybody that's watched. I had a lot of fun making this video and I hope you had a lot of fun watching it and I will see you next time. Stay awesome. This video is brought to you by my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your generous support in funding this channel and keeping it up and running.